Hello, this is Mr. Buffett, and we're going to look at rational numbers today and some of the things that we can do with rational numbers. Here are some examples on the board of rational numbers, including a little bit of a pinwheel here because we're going to be looking a lot with, we're going to be working a lot with fractions today. Basically, rational numbers include all numbers that can be expressed as a fraction. So let's compare a couple of fractions. When we're asked to compare some fractions like 3 over 4 and 5 over 7, we're asked to compare the, are they less than, greater than, equal to each other. One way to, com to compare them is to use common denominators. So in this case, the common denominator of 28, we can convert the fraction 3 over 4 to being 21 over 28, multiplying the top and bottom times 7. And then we can convert 5 over 7 to being the fraction of 20 over 28 by multiplying the top and bottom by 4. That's how we convert fractions to equivalent fractions. And these ones now have a common denominator. And so we can easily tell, well, 21 is greater than 20. Therefore, 21 out of 28 is bigger than 20 out of 28. All right? Or the other way is to convert them into being decimals. 3 over 4 is the same as saying 3 divided by 4. That gives us 0 0.75. 5 divided by 7 gives us 0 0.71428, and it keeps going on. Um, so we, again, when we are comparing them, 0 0.75 is greater than 0 0.71. All right. So try this question, 1 fifth and 1 fourth. Which one is bigger? Which is greater than, less than, or equal to sign we go in there? Again, convert both fractions to having a common denominator of 20. So multiply times 4 over 4. This one we would multiply times 5 over 5. And then we look at it. 5 over 20 is greater than 4 over 20. Or if we convert those fractions into decimals, we would have 0 0.2 and 0 0.25. 0 0.25 is a little bit bigger. All right. So again, ways to compare fractions. One more comparison with fractions that I want to do here is when we write a fraction in between these two. When you're writing a fraction between two numbers, it makes it a little bit more complicated. You can't just convert them into decimals and compare them. What we have to do with these ones is we definitely have to get a common denominator. The least common denominator between 29 and 45, 145, is 145. So this fraction will remain the same, 56 over 145. And our fraction on the left will get multiplied times 5 on the top and on the bottom. Now, we're asked to write a fraction in between these two. And unfortunately, we can't. 55 and 56, we can't write anything that's in between that. So what we need to do is go one step further. We're going to find another common denominator, but one that's even bigger. So we'll multiply the top and bottom of both fractions times 2. This gives us that this fraction here is 112 over 100 or 290. This one here will multiply the top and bottom times 2, and that gives us 110 over 190. And now we're able to write the fraction that fits exactly in between the two of them as 111 over 290. So sometimes you might get a question like that, and you try and find a common denominator. And finding the least common denominator in this case actually didn't save us any time at all um, because then we had to find another denom or a new denominator. Now, each fraction, you can continue making them bigger and bigger and bigger, the denominators, as long as you multiply the same times the top and the bottom of each fraction. All right, time for writing some numbers as fractions. This will um, come into play because we're talking about rational numbers. And 5 is a rational number. It's a number that you can write as a fraction. 5 is equivalent to 5 over 1. So all integers and whole numbers you can write as fractions. All right. So now we're going to compare 3 to 25 over 9. How do we compare the number 3 to 25 over 9? Well, we're going to change 3 into being a fraction of 3 over 1. And then we're going to write both fractions with a denominator of 9. 25 over 9 is already set. 
To make 3 over 1 have a denominator of 9, we'll need to multiply the top and bottom of that fraction times 9, which gives us 27 over 25, which we can compare 27 is definitely greater than 25, so 27 over 9 is greater than 25 over 9. And that's that. All right. Um, also, one thing here, when you're converting a fraction to a decimal, we'll talk a little bit about um, some other things you can do with rational numbers. Um, whoops, sorry about that. Um, there we are. Ah, there. When we're converting, or when we have a rational number like 3 over 5, 14 over 11, 5 over 6, we can convert those into a decimal simply by dividing the numerator divided by the denominator. So 3 divided by 5, 14 divided by 11, 5 divided by 6. And you can see what you have here. This one here is a 1.2727, and two sevens continue on. This is 8.33333, and threes continue on. This is 0 0.6. When the decimals repeat indefinitely, we call them a repeating decimal. When the decimals terminate, or end, like 0.6, that's all there is to it. There's nothing beyond that. That's called a terminating decimal. Both terminating and repeating decimals are types of rational numbers. All right, These numbers can be written as a fraction. Um, in our next lesson, we're going to talk a little bit more about converting repeating decimals into fractions, because that's not the easiest thing to do. We're going to have a whole lesson about that. But for terminating decimals, it's pretty easy to put them in fractions. So I'll just briefly describe how to do that. 0 0.3 means 3 tenths, or in other words, 3 over 10. 0 0.34 means 34 hundredths, or 34 over 100. And 0 0.645 means 645 thousandths, or 645 over 1,000. These ones can be reduced down to lower terms. Right, 34 over 100 and 645 over 1,000. But the basics of converting decimals to fractions, if it's a terminating decimal, if the decimal stops, you just put it over whatever the placeholder is. If it's thousandths, you put it over 1,000. If it's hundredths, you put it over 100. If it's tenths, you put it over 10. And that's how you convert from, decim from terminating decimals into fractions. There's also a shortcut. Um, if you've got a good calculator, and hopefully you do have a good calculator when you're moving into doing these types of problems. And the shortcut is that there's a button on your calculator that will be F to D or S to D. All right? I have a Casio, and it's, the button is S to D. And on um, my Texas instrument, it's F to D. It means fraction decimal or decimal to fraction. So if you've got a calculator, you've actually got a shortcut that will help you out. Try this. Put in your, your calculator 0 0.172, and then hit that fraction to decimal button. Um, again, on the Texas instrument, it's F to D, but it's located above a button. So you have to hit your second function key. And then it'll give to you a fraction of 43 over 250. What does that tell me? That tells me. I don't need to learn everything I learned. What a waste of time. I'm just kidding. It just tells you that 43 over 250, or 43 divided by 250, gives you the decimal of 0 0.72. Or you can also know that the fraction of 172 over 1,000 reduces down to lowest terms of 43 over 250. The neat thing about the calculator is when you put it into the calculator, it will always give it to you in lowest terms, all right, which is really nice. OK. So some things to remember about rational numbers. They include all numbers that can be written as a fraction. We can convert between fractions, decimals, and percentages. But we didn't look at percentages specifically today. But fractions and decimals, we can definitely convert between them. And to compare or order rational numbers, Get them in the same form. Sometimes you can do that in a decimal. Sometimes you need to make fractions with common denominators.